Hey, 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 this is the new t-shirt from Nutrix the Synth Guy. Hey, that's me. How are you doing, guys? I am Nutrix the Synth Guy, and I've got a new t-shirt. It's uh, there somewhere, I would say here. I'm happy to be there with you. You don't know how much the YouTube channel means a lot to me. I create these videos because I feel the need for it, and I am really gracious that you guys are clicking on it following it, subscribing, and talking to me about all that stuff. So thank you for being there. And if you want to share it with your friends, go ahead, share this video. But today we will talk about another, for me, great offer from Roland. Um, I have been really surprised of what Xenology is bringing to the table within the Roland cloud. A year ago, I heard about the Roland Cloud and I was not interested uh, because I was into only Dallas and iOS stuff. Now, um, I hope it's going to be on the iPad soon. I don't know, but my guess is they will have to be there at one point. But Xenology, if you want to know more about what it is, there's a link there to click on and to learn more about that. I had the honor of having Dustin and Brendan from Roland explaining what the, the, the whole Zen core Xenology Roland cloud reality is and it's pretty powerful. Now keep in mind some people believe that the offer of uh, Roland cloud is only monthly which is not the case. You pay monthly or you can buy one model of plugins. And there's two technology. There's the advanced circuit behavior which it would you find on uh, the System 8, the System 1, System 1M, and most of the boutique series. And there's another technology, which is the Zen Core technology, which is a advanced behavior modeling, which is different. Um, I would say that in the end, the behavior modeling is a more efficient algorithm, you know, so it does a great job of running on a simpler CPU to, great, to give you a great result. Um, again, if you want more information about the advanced circuit behavior or the advanced behavior modeling, there's a link there to go and watch. Again, the rolling guys are more than happy to explain the differences. Now, today, I'm going to talk about the latest, what they called model expansion for Xenology. So, it is within the Xenology um, creation or universe if you want. So it is, I'm guessing, compatible to Zencore. And these model expansion are basically an expansion of the Xenology to recreate a model of a synthesizer using all the algorithm that they own and they have. Uh, so they, I talked, the last one was, um, I talked about the JX8P, which for me, it was just a blast to play. It sounds really nice and round and lush and all that stuff. And you can create pads and it's cool. Again, uh, there's a link probably over there. Now, the, the one that they have released this week is the SH-101. That's a classic. I own the SH-01A, which is a great... I mean, that's probably the one of the only one boutique that I kept. All the other ones I tried, they're really cool. But the SH-101 is kind of a simple one. I mean, if you don't know what the 101 is about, um, keep in mind that the SH series was created to be aimed at beginners. People who just are getting into creating sounds and they want something that sounds good, but at the same time they want something that uh, is simple to use. And if you look at the way the SH-101 is built uh, and the structure of the synthesis is very simple. There's one oscillator. There's a creative way of using it where you have more than one sound out of it, but there's one oscillator. That's it. There's one filter, there's one envelope, one envelope for everything, and there's one LFO, and there's one VCA, and there's one really cool sequencer. So that's what the SH-101 was, and it just, the sound was great. And especially with the pulse width modulation at the low bass and you get like little cool sound out of it. So it was aimed for beginners, but it became a 
good choice for a lot of pros just because the SH, one of the main reason people go back to it, it's super hard to make a bad sound out of it because it's simple. You tweak something, you got a sound. So if somebody says, I have no other synthesizer, I want to start with one, SH-101 is probably one of the simplest one to start making sound out of it because it's just simple and it sounds good. So you have that feeling that you did something great and you can play it. Now, there are a lot of differences between the original and these virtual recreation. Uh, even the SH-01A has option that was not possible in the original. For example, the SH-101 original was analog and monophonic. One note, one sound. That's it. Two note, the second note would kill the first one or depending on how you play it. So only one note at a time. Well, in this, these digital virtual recreation of them, well, they unlock the potential of playing more than one note. So the hardware SH-01A can play, if I'm not mistaken, four notes. Might be wrong on that, but more than one. They, you can activate the polyphonic version of it. So it works really cool. So you have the same thing in plugins. I don't have the original analog one, and even if I add it, it would not sound the same because it would be used of like 40 years old with probably components that are gradually uh, drying out and they're not sounding like the original should be. So sometimes it's kind of a difficult thing to compare vintage synthesizers with the original one and with the virtual one. So let's actually dive in. I'll, I'll listen to that. So I am using uh, Zen Beats um, and you have Xenology open. And in Xenology, you have, uh, you just basically go into uh, menu and you select the uh, model expansion. Now, the window itself is very simple. You have uh, the this section here, if you close the edit, you have, um, let's go back to normal. You have the cutoff, the resonance, the attack, release, and sub. And the, um, you know, polyphonic, monophonic, unison, these are just a you know general stuff that you have for every Xenology synth. If you go into edit, now you have a window where you can actually create something. Um, it doesn't look like the original SH, you know, but you have all the information that you should have. I mean, you've got the VCO, you've got the range for it, you've got the modulation. Modulation comes from, depending on what you selected here, actually, actually modulation comes from the modulator here, which is the LFO. You've got the different shapes, you've got the rate. This is mostly like the original. You have uh, pulse width modulation, the source of the modulation, which is the LFO, manual or the envelope. You've got the source mixer. Uh, the, so the oscillator itself can be a square wave, a sawtooth, you can combine these two at the same time. You also have a sub oscillator. So because basically you've got another note, either one octave down or two octave down. And um, the two octave down can be square or pulse width. And then you get the volume for this and you get a noise generator. So this is just one oscillator. But as I'm saying, there's a creative way that they had at that in those years to create rich content with only one oscillator, which is pretty cool. And then you've got the filter, cutoff frequency, resonance, um, the modulation, where uh, the modulation come from moving the cutoff point. So envelope, mod, um, and keyboard. Keyboard follow. So if you go higher on the keys, the filter will open up. If you go low on the keys, the filter will close like some instrument that you want to mimic. Uh, the VCA, uh, the volume, is it from the envelope or is it from the gate, basically on off? And then you, get, you only have one envelope. You also have effects, but I'm turning these off because the original uh, SH didn't have any uh, effects, so it's not activated for now. On the top here, you've got this little screen that shows you the internal um, structure or diagram or schematics of the um, a signal path of the uh, synthesizer. So it's always a cool thing to understand that this is how it works. Um, and you have this window here where you have the polyphonic, solo mode, unison mode, a solo unison. Uh, these are different, uh, this is exponential. You've got uh, the way the portamento will work, linear, original, and two different exponential version. Uh, you can have the portamento off, on, or automatic, and then you've got a pitch drift, and you've got condition. These two are for about 
faking the age of your synthesizer. If you go into condition, uh, if you go maximum, it's you've got an old dried circuits uh, in your old SH-101. So it's gonna, sometimes you're gonna have a, a, a more difficult way to, maybe it's gonna drift a little bit, but you've got a separate control for the drifting itself. Um, because if you know, analog synthesizers are not super stable and the drift can happen just because, you know, that's part of their reality. So condition um, is about how old the machine is and it will affect many parts in it, but it will change the way it sounds. Let's actually listen to this thing. We have this section here playing. If you double click on it, you see at the back, there's a big line here going up and down. That is the modulation rate here, the LFO rate, okay? So that's why it goes up and then it goes down gradually. It's part of my movement that I decided to do for this sound. Well, this sound is a pad. Uh, now it's in poly mode, but you could put it in solo or unison. It changes a lot, the sound of this thing, which is really cool. So you've got uh, the VCO. What I'll do with this one, I'll, I'll play a little bit with the uh, changes. You've got, um, let's play, you just keep that. I want this movement to be interesting because the movement that you have from the LFO is sent to the pulse width here and also for the disc pulse, pulse width here. Let's open the filter a little bit. We actually close it down, but let's close it slowly. It opens and then closes. You get that movement, which is really nice. And Open up and closing. Very nice, you know, movement in it. And you want more modulation? You can just bring more LFO into it. Okay, let's keep it like that. So just an example of what you can do. And this is just in monophonic mode. I'm not using the polyphonic for this case. Example of the sound you can make really quickly with this. Now, let's stop this. Let's try this other one here. This is running the Xenology version. So we've got the bass line. And my little bass is actually, um, let's open this up. Very simple. You know, it just works. It does the job. You can have this maybe lower movement. But I also did, oh, well, now I played with it. Damn, I'm stupid. But okay, let's, uh, let's keep it like that. Um, I did a, the same sound with this one here, running the circuit, the advanced circuit modeling. Come on, just open, don't crash. Oh, come on. There you go. So this is circuit behavior. And this is the modeling behavior. So these are two different algorithm all together, but they're both aimed to create a, an experience of playing a SH-101. Let's try this one. This is pretty close. This is pretty damn close. And again, I, I, you can always play with it until you get to the sound. So honestly, um, I mean, you, you decide which one you prefer, but this is um, what's supposed to be running in the, let's stop this. This is what's supposed to be running in the Boutique series and the System 8. 
And for me, the differences between the two is not uh, noticeable enough that I would say that this one is better than this one. It's just uh, the result is you play a cool synth and it sounds cool. Now, um, if you look at the differences, though, you have some of them. Uh, if you look at, let's actually make it a little bit smaller so you see the two at the same time. Look at the top here. Um, one of the differences is that uh, some of these modulation here, the VCO, you can go up or down. So you can have an inverse modulation, an inverse reaction. So with the same LFO, you can go down or up. So you can inverse it, which is something you cannot do on the Xenology version or on the model expansion. The range goes from 16 to 2, in this case goes for 64 to 2. So the plug out version it has a larger range of uh, notes you can play or detune if you want the rest of it is a, is a little bit the same most of it is the same except the fact that um and the plug out you've got a dedicated envelope for the vcf and a dedicated envelope for the vca which is not the case here you only have one envelope which is what you have on the original you only have one envelope so the plug out is um honest until you actually take a separate envelope and then you've got two of them yeah if, but if you click on gate but I, again the logic is if you want something that is exactly like the original well it's kind of a limit with today's technology like they've got effects here you didn't have any effects on the original and there's effects here and you didn't have any effects on the original so why limit yourself and you didn't have unison and poly and all this you know thing on the original so it's, it's just choice, but you need to understand that um, what you have here, which is a plus, is not on the original. You have, though, um, the arpeggiator here, which is pretty cool, which you don't have in the Xenology model expansion. So there's plus and minus, but also there's, there's this thing here. You've got three different uh, filter reaction or filter um, model, if you want, that you can play with, which you don't have in the plug -out. Now, if you want to remember, I, the first time I played with it, I said, well, I don't know what these are and I'm really, I don't like it. I would like to be able to read about it. Now, if you want to read the manual, there's something here. You go on menu, you go on help, and you have a cool PDF coming up, appearing here. And in that PDF, if you look closely about something here, you have Jupiter 8, Juno 106, JXAP SH101. So this was released last week. This was released this week. Well, we're guessing these will be released soon. So it means that you're going to have this as a Jupiter 8 emulation model expansion, and we're going to have uh, Juno 106. That's a question of time. I don't know when? I don't know, but it's in the manual. So it's not really something like a, a big scoop. You just need to read about it. Uh, which is pretty cool because uh, these also are classics that we can actually play with. So again, if you go back to the notion here, if you want to know what these are for, it's very simple. I mean, these are simple synthesizers. They don't have a lot of options. And the, the layout they give you is very simple and easy to use. And they just explain all the different knobs, what they do and why they exist. Okay, so here is the information if you need to. Let's go back to Xenology. So that's um, the differences between these two. Okay, let's actually try another one. I'm gonna play um, this one here. Yeah. 
that's the problem. You got this envelope here, and you have this envelope here, which is not possible in this age. So I'm gonna have to take this one. So this is gonna be uh, a very long. question of, of, of playing around with it and one thing you might notice is that where these knobs are they don't have the same value like this one the knobs and Xenology goes from 0 to 1024 so it's uh, what 10 bit resolution 10 12 where this one the cutoff goes from 0 255, so it's 156, so that's an 8-bit resolution. So there's a huge difference in the capacity of describing where the knob is. So of course, it means that these do not mean the same thing. And on top of that, if you play with the real SH, and all of the synthesizers, you'll find that when you move the knob to a certain point, they're not exactly reacting the same way. The amount of effect on it might be more in the light you know, in the end of the knob movement or at the beginning and in the middle. So it doesn't mean because you're at the same visual space that you're with the same value. So this little thing goes like this. So guys, um, that's it. Um, I like I like it. I like the sound of Xenology. I'm surprised of this technology. I didn't expect it at all. And um, if if you are looking for Roland sound in your computer, you have to look at Xenology. You have to look at Roland Cloud. You can buy if you want it. Um, you can buy monthly or just buy certain one that you want. Or there's also a free version for Xenology Lite to just to get some sound and play with it. So that's it. I hope this is actually helpful, give you an idea of what to expect if you're diving into this. Um, and uh, again, I've got my t-shirts now, I've got hats, I've got a mouthpiece, actually a, a face mask uh, with all the stuff that we're living today. Um, and I'm gonna have more of them wearing them in my future videos. If you like what I'm doing, thumb up and share it with your friends and uh, hope to see you soon. Stay safe, make music.